My name is Megan Helder. I'm a cardiothoracic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic, and I'm here to talk to you about our article, um, Aortic Root Dilation, Do Patients with Marfan Syndrome Fare Worse Than Those with Marfanoid Features, which is soon to appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The takeaway message of this article I wanted to impress upon you is that patients with leptosomic features and aortic root dilation who do not fit the diagnostic criteria for a genetic syndrome should still be followed carefully and considered for an operation at a smaller aortic root diameter than the general population. In an overview, we looked at two groups of patients, both with aortic root dilation. In one group, we had patients who fit the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome either through genetic means or the Ghent criteria. And the other group composed of patients with leptosomic features, but who did not fit the diagnostic criteria of a genetic syndrome. For both groups of patients, we looked at patients who had an operation for their aortic root dilation and also those who did not. For patients who did undergo an operation, there was no significant difference in aortic size between the two groups, but clinically speaking, patients with leptosomic features had an about an average of, three, of a three millimeter increase in the size of their aorta before they underwent an operation. For those patients who did not undergo an operation, two patients in each group actually had an aortic dissection. The 10-year survival was also similar between the two groups. Because both of the patients who had dissections in the leptosomic features group had an aortic diameter less than 50 millimeters, and because the patients without any gen genetic syndrome had similar survival to patients with Marfan syndrome, we recommend they be approached more like patients with a genetic syndrome instead of the general population. Mayo Clinic has an aortic clinic where we follow patients with leptosomic features and no diagnosable genetic syndrome closely and make a multidisciplinary decision about the care of these patients, which individualizes decision making to each patient, which is what we would recommend be done everywhere. This study directly addresses the threshold of aortic size of when to offer repair and really does offer evidence of changing practice. What this means for patients is that patients with leptosomic features and aortic root dilation who do not fit a known genetic syndrome should be followed just as closely with patients with connective tissue disorders and perhaps offered an operation at the same aortic size threshold as those patients with a genetic syndrome or a connective tissue disorder. The next step in this line of research should be a multi-institutional study looking at more, more at the natural history of the aorta of patients with leptosomic features, and this would be crucial in obtaining more information. Thank you for your time and attention in watching this video and also reading our article. Speaking on behalf of the co-authors, we hope that this study has shed light on a clinical dilemma that we find we approach every day. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.